Welcome to Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. It's Patricia Steer. This is episode number 292. The Secret Show is back after an extremely long hiatus. So um, if you thought uh, we'd run out of potatoes, you, my friend, were wrong. Mark Sargent joins me. Hello, Mark. Hi, Patricia. How are you? You seem to be wearing something very interesting, which we're going to get to in a little bit. I do want to uh, say hello to everyone in the live chat. Thank you for being here. Please give the video a thumbs up. And we are going to be talking to Zoom Truth, David Hicks, in a little bit, but I want to give a, a bit of information about what's yet to come in this show. Of course, it's Flat Earth, uh, friendship, conversation, fun, community updates, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to be talking about what I used as the thumbnail for this uh, video. Uh, Jeff Bezos and, yep, he says he's going to the moon, <laughs> Blue Origin. So we'll get into that. We'll talk about the death of Stanton T. Freeman and how how that ties in with Flat Earth and Mark Sargent and UFOs. We're going to talk about putting women on the moon. Hmm? We heard uh, a little while ago that they didn't have enough spacesuits for women to do spacewalks on the ISS, so how are they going to get chicks to the moon? Hmm, we'll have to think about that. The moon is suffering from shrinkage. We're being called science deniers yet again. Bill Nye speaks out on climate change, and uh, we'll talk about this new channel called Probably Alexandra, which is really cool. We'll talk about a new video that came out that's on the Celebrate Truth channel done by the Nelk, N-E-L-K, Nelk Boys. And um, I don't know, the Sun and Moon app from DITRH, the Calgary Conference, uh, Malav uh, and Shanti, his dog, Karen B's birthday, the Trinity Broadcasting Network and Mark Sargent being on that and uh, the new interactive video that Josh Crane from the UK put out. Links to all of these things will be in the description box by the time this show goes from live to Memorex. Anyway, Mark, I need to ask you, what the heck is that weird looking hoodie thing you're wearing? This weird looking hoodie thing that I'm wearing was given to me while I was down at the New Zealand conference with you. It was given to me by a nice man named Douglas from Australia, who I'm sure you met. And he was wearing it for quite a few photo ops. And basically it is a NASA Apollo astronaut uniform that has been transformed into a hoodie. So we got NASA over here, we got the Apollo 11 logo over here, and all the hookups for uh, a regulation spacesuit, six of them. And uh, yeah, very, very cool. You so know I've watched, I, I've used it on, on different interviews already, and uh, it kind of goes along with my, you know, magic astronaut suit clue, all, all you know. So. Well, I do want to thank Douglas McKinley. He literally took the shirt off his back or the hoodie off his back while we were in the hotel in New Zealand in Auckland for the Flat Earth New Zealand Expo that Adrian Morrison put on. He literally right. took that off on our last days in the hotel and handed it to you. And it was a perfect fit. It's a little big on you because Douglas he, he did. It, well, it's not it's that big. Nice. I mean, the hoodies are supposed to be fairly big. Yeah, pretty much. So, but I, but I dig it. I, I think it's kind of fun. And it is fun. Uh, the colors are really weird because, I mean, you know, it is it is an exact replica of, you know, the colors, even the fading and the little smudge marks and the dirt marks on it. The dirt marks from the soundstage? <laughs> exactly. From the Air Force base that they yeah. rubbed grit on. It's got some, and it's kind of, it was kind of fun wearing around some of the streets in New Zealand, you know, because it's got the American flag on it. And so I kind of stick out like a sore thumb. It's like, all oh, right, the Americans. Yeah. <laughs> But they, they like the Americans there in New Zealand. It was a lot well, of fun. New Zealand was great. It's one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. And yeah. I want to thank Douglas McKinley, who did some uh, help uh, with everything and did a little bit of touring with you. He took you to Hobbiton. And yeah. uh, he is a guy who um, is born and raised in Wales, but he lives in Australia. But right. hop, skip and a jump to New Zealand, no matter what right. map you follow. And uh, he came for the uh, for the expo in New Zealand. Obviously. Yeah, a lot of fun. Uh, more than the people expected showed up. You know, we had we had to bring in chairs at the last minute, which was kind of cool. Oh, and nice. the the media was very tolerable. There was only one guy that I didn't like. Uh, you know, Guy one Williams. Guy. Always one guy. Guy. Yeah. Uh, and his rival was there. Um, 
Oh, what was his name? David. Oh, boy. I'm going to completely screw it up. So if you live in New Zealand, you probably know this particular person. Here. Farrier. Fancies himself as a comedian. David David Ferrier was actually a bigger presence. Yeah, but yeah, Guy Williams was the comedian. Guy and Williams, we, excuse we, me. I talked with him for an hour out in the sun, and he talked to a lot of people. He, he and David Ferrier were there all day. And in fact, it was weird. I saw David on a commercial, on a television commercial, while I was in the hotel waiting for the plane. He's uh, he's actually a pretty serious journalist down there. Hmm. And so. Vinnie Eastwood showed up for a couple of days in a row. Those right, Vinnie Eastwood. We can't what forget about about him. Conspiracy guy, I guess you could call him. The Alex Jones of New Zealand. Yes. People uh, know him. Very, very interesting guy, very wordy, uh, intelligent though, and bombastic and a lot of things. Super fantastic bombastic. Exactly. He can drink yeah. a lot of shots. That's all I'll say. Yes, the man can drink. He's a man of excess. No question. Uh, so, and then I, I also would like to thank, of course, um, John Bailey. John Bailey. That's just what I was going to say. Yeah, who who got to drive us around and, and show us parts of the island, all the north parts of the island. And just... So many wonderful places. And he's a guy who is from England. He's got a Cockney English accent. I hope he's listening today. He's one of my Facebook friends, as is is Douglas McKinley. Um, John is from England, but now he lives in New Zealand. And he yeah. was talking about how very early in his life with his wife, he wanted to live somewhere else aside from uh, England where it was cold. And he stumbled upon New Zealand where you get a lot of the, the UK vibe, but you also get a, a tropical climb. So oh, yeah. I mean, it's England meets Hawaii in some weird way. It is. It's like if you took England and just transplanted it to the lower South Pacific. That's basically it. I mean, with the exception of there's not as many people, not nearly as many. There's only four million people, four and a half million for the entire New Zealand country. Do you think there's more flat earthers than there are people in New Zealand at this point in time on May 15th, 2019? Overall, yes, absolutely. I think I so. Mean, just in America alone. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, in fact, I'd, I'd love to like redo the stats and the num uh, for the American numbers. Because you remember that we were in the three to four percentile just in America and every percentage point in America is 3.3, 3.5 million people. And that's not even including the, the the big number, of course, is the 30 plus percent of younger people from 18 to 24. Well, this leads into nice segue to um, a guy who is looking at numbers and stats in a way, but in a bigger way, he's trying to connect flat earthers with, with each other. And his name is David Hicks, and I hope he'll join us now. Um, he's hopefully listening and this is your cue to, 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 to join us. David, get on the stick. Come on. <laughs> Zoom truth is the name of his channel. And I hope it works because we've had hangout issues lately. We're having a third party on created an inability to have sound. So fingers crossed for David Hicks of Zoom truth to join, uh, in the description box of this video, you'll find a link to Zoom truth's channel and his Flat Earth People Finder map, which is the one I wanted to get him to, to come in and discuss since uh, we're waiting. Oh, nope, there he is now. Hi, how are you? Hey, I'm good. Can you hear me? Uh-oh, sound. Mm. Oh. Yep, it's happened again. It might not be you. It could be something, uh, Zoom or David, um, mm. with Google Hangouts because, Mark, you and I have had this before with a third party on we with us. Have. But it's only a recent problem in the multi-problemed google hangouts thing really unfortunate if this is and he case. can hear us right yeah yes. i hear you yeah, he can hear just us. what happened before when you and i had someone else on us mm. this is where sign language would come in very handy it would the only sign language i know are a couple of rude gestures so that won't <laughs> and i don't think that's officially sign language <laughs> i don't think it is just, you know all right, well, let's see. How did we solve it? We have solved it before with a rebooting occasionally of the third party. Yeah, have them, have them jump out and jump back in and, and uh, reboot in the meantime. Okay. But um, in the future- Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, David Weiss is saying we can actually hear him. Is that oh, that's what we ran what into? happened before. Right, wait, um, oh crap, he already left. Uh, no, it doesn't matter if we can hear him. I mean, well, we if can't hear him now because he's him. gone. Right, but everyone can hear him but you and I. And that's exactly what happened um, with Chris Van Maitre when we had him on, too. That's right. We had to let him talk, basically. Right. But then again, why can't we just do a normal three-party hangout? I, uh, I blame Google, of course. I blame NASA. 
<laughs> Look, there's weird technical issues happening all over the place. I mean, I have gone into Hangouts nowadays, and basically when I join, yes, I know, thank you, David Weiss. We absolutely, we know. But he left, and now he's got to come back. Right. I don't know why I'm looking Sorry, down everyone. there. It's because that's where he shows up down the corner. Um, David's, David's down to the left? <laughs> yeah, David is down, well, down to the right on my oh, side, okay. yes. Oh, yeah. Um, because it's a big monitor. Um, I've gone into Google Hangouts, and basically if I'm in the Hangout and somebody enters the Hangout after me, I cannot hear them, but everybody else in the Hangout could hear them. This is exactly what's happening, and it's not. But to both of us, stuff. that's the weird part. Yeah. Well, that's what happened before with Chris Van Matry. And what we did is what we'll have to do with uh, with with David Zoom if and when he comes back and he, we can't hear him, which will just say, okay, go ahead and tell us all about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and when his mouth stops moving, then we'll be like, okay, thank you. <laughs> well, that kind of reminds me of the uh, the Guy Williams interview that I did where after we were all done, I've never done this before. He goes, okay, we, we, we need to do um, about 30 to 40 seconds of nodding where the cameras are on us and we're literally not saying anything. We're just doing this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's worrisome though, because you might not know what you're nodding. And it's that, well, no, there was, there's, there's no dialogue between us. It's just literally he and I nodding at each other for 40 yeah, seconds. Just imagine if somebody put some kind of voiceover over that and you're saying, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. just uh, yeah. You could, could, you could do you just of. about anything with it. And so it's like, okay, hopefully he's kind, but he has not released that story yet. Oh. Well, so. I'm going to keep discussing things until we see uh, David come back. Zoom okay. Truth. Um, want to say happy birthday belated to Karen B. It was a little while ago, but she celebrated a birthday and she always deserves our attention and respect and love for everything she does. And uh, Wait, wait, guy... who? Yeah, well, I'll let you know a little bit more about her later. I'll send you one of her ASMR videos and perhaps that will ring a bell. Well, I, unless it's on uh, early DVD or high quality VHS, I'm probably not interested. Right, right. Uh, hey, by the way, real quick, uh, I, I want I got a last minute shout out for Peanut Gallery's daughter, Brittany. Yes. Brittany's birthday too yesterday, right? Uh, I think it's today. Oh, wonderful! Well, happy, birthday. So happy birthday to you, Peanut Brittany! Gallery's Thank you for all birthday. the t-shirts. And... Um, also, uh, Five Arts Liberalis. It's was his birthday two days ago on the two three days ago on the i think 12th of may so happy birthday to him five arts liberalis a really nice guy uh, ray is his name and he um sometimes sends me thumbnails to use on this show if it's a super creative thumbnail is probably done by him or colorful so uh that's a nice a nice another nice person um since we're still stalling for time a little bit until uh, zoom comes back um Calgary conference. You leave tomorrow, don't you? I leave tomorrow morning for the Calgary Truth Truth Expo. Truth. But I just going to call it the Flat Earth Conference. Everything Calgary. Be a Flat Earth Conference. It's That's it's not it's not going to be all Flat Earth, but I am speaking at it, and so is Robbie Davidson and uh, other people. And the, Robbie just got back from his long, extended, uh, unscheduled vacation um, due to the fact that Robbie Jr., his new baby boy's passport was in their luggage when he flew to the uh, expo in New Zealand. His wife is from, from New Zealand. She's a Kiwi. Right. And the passport was in with other things in the suitcase and something exploded in the suitcase. Kind of like the Big Bang where nothing exploded and created everything. Well, in this case, something exploded and created a huge mess all over Robbie Jr.'s, you know, this baby's passport. passport. Yeah. So the face was all blotted out and all you could see were the baby's beautiful eyes. And of course, there was an issue with passport control and they had to stay a little bit extra longer and work things out and everything did end up fine. But he was there for longer than expected quite a bit longer i mean he he's barely making it back to the just in time to turn around and go to the calgary conference all so, right okay so does does um david is uh, back any luck uh, uh, by the way i've been reading in chat mm -hmm. and I, they're reminding us how you did it last time where he actually you could hear him through your phone yeah and there was a huge delay and it annoyed everybody so i'm gonna go get that little bluetooth thanks everyone in chat for remembering how i do things because i didn't remember i just know but, problems but he can hair. talk he, yeah. he can, can you he can hear me now? Okay, so first off, um, since we can't talk Zoom, I did let everybody know that I put a link to your channel in the description box and the Flat Earth People Finder in there too. And I do want to message you later and just schedule a full out and out interview with you if you want to do that. Okay. Um, 
and I'm going to go get the little earbuds so I can hear you and everyone else is going to be able to hear you except Mark and myself. So I'm just going to let you take it away. And when your mouth stops moving, then Mark and I will start talking. So or just ahead. wave, wave when you're done, <laughs> flag us down. Um, or if you have a, or if you have a laser pointer, point <laughs> it straight at the camera like that. Blah, blah, just blah. let us know what it, what it does and how people can get involved so that we can, um, all put ourselves on the map. And also there are some people, as we know, who are, you know, rightfully paranoid within the community. Otherwise, if we weren't paranoid, we'd never become flat earthers in the first place. If we didn't think people were lying to us, how can people protect their identity? Because a lot of people don't want people to know where exactly they live or what their real name is. And I know you've got things in place for that. So go. Okay. Um, so recently we just started, it was like about a week ago, a week and a half ago. Uh, I think a lot of the people watching may, might have seen this, uh, but it's a flat earth people finder. And what it is, is basically just a map um, in which people can, uh, by signing up, you can get become located on a map and, and be able to get, get connected with other people uh, who also sign up and get, uh, get placed on the map. And so I've already had a, a good a good little bit of feedback from the people who have joined in terms of having success in um, in in finding other people who have uh, who are within you know in their in their area and connecting with them. Um, so it's very simple and basic right now, um, and, but it will soon be updated. Uh, what's been nice is that uh, uh, David David Weiss. Uh, with uh, DITRH and um, a few other people, coders have uh, contacted me and they're starting to already work on updating a, a completely brand new um, flat earth people locator or friend locator, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so it will be much more private. It will be much more almost like a Facebook, I guess, for flat earthers, but with like the map being the um, maybe the predominant feature. Um, and then hopefully it'll have other, you know, we'll be able to post link up groups. Um, we'll be able to post, um, not link up groups. Um, when we're, when we're having meetups, when people are having meetups, um, where they'll be located. So it'll be, could be a, 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 a useful information hub, I guess is the way I see it, um, when they're finished. So that was really nice of, uh, of, uh, DITRH, David Weiss. Um, he put me in touch with, a with a coder named William, uh, prior to William, there's another person named Greg and uh, one other coder who have all contacted me and, and said, you know, they were willing to donate their time to, um, to make this, you know, better and uh, something that's going to be more useful. But uh, right now, you know, it's, it's, be, it's become, I think, somewhat useful. Like I said, I've heard quite a few people who have, um, who have given me some little bit of success stories. David, David Weiss said he met a, couple, uh, a girl from across the way in Long Island where he might be able to do an experiment. And I've had uh, a, a guy actually, I, I guess, called on to um, to your show last night, uh, who I heard briefly, and he was talking uh, that he was able to connect with a few people in his area. So, you know, it seems like to me it's already working, and it's working with literally like 650 people who have signed up. Which, uh, as people know, I'm probably always like uh, impatient with things. So uh, I, I would like it to be greater than that and more people, but. Um, you know, I guess I'm happy that at least 650 people have seen, you know, what it might be able to do and it wouldn't be able to do anything if those people hadn't signed up, um, initially and, and done it. Um, but, uh, just so everybody is clear, you don't have to put your full name. You don't even have to put your real name on there when you enter it, um, under your address, you can just enter your city and state. And when you do that, the best way to get it entered into the system is to enter your city and state and then press tab and that will actually get the location entered because if you don't press tab, sometimes people have some problems with that. Um, then you can put on any website, any YouTube channels uh, that you want to promote also or so that, so that people can find it. And um, you might want to create like your another email just to be safe. Like, so you don't mess up your, your current one. And for some reason, someone is like trying to, uh, to give people a hard time because the email will be, um, you know, will be somewhat public. Um, and all that is stuff that'll be fixed on the uh, the newer version. So that's pretty much um, you know what the what the finder is. But what's really cool is that uh, as it's filling in, we have people from China, from Afghanistan, uh, the UK is filling in nicely. 
Poland, Germany, um, all across the United States, uh, Philippines. I've seen, you know, so it's like you're starting to see it fill in, but you know, 650 people. So is you know, it's a pretty small fraction, I think of what's out there. So, um, the big thing is, is that, you know, the community, community itself, um, sees it as like its own tool and hopefully understands or can understand, I, I you know, maybe, maybe I'll get flack for this, but I'm hoping that people see it as something is that it's their responsibility too, to, um, to make successful because, um, I, you know, I'm not going to be able to do it alone. When David Weiss got on there with Jaron, uh, they promoted it. We had like 200 people sign up in two days, which was huge. Um, Realm Walker has been promoting it. Um, Mark, you you uh, you spoke about it last night, which is huge. So each time people speak about it, I think uh, you know it can attract more people onto it, and that will just make it that much more effective. Um, so you know, the more people that join, the better. And please, everyone, you know, continue to uh, to you know to try to get the word out so we can you know reach everybody and uh, and get them on there. Uh, if you are nervous about the um, the lack of uh, security with it. Um, a couple more weeks, two, three, four weeks, and we will have a second version up. And they'll they'll have the new improved version, and um, you can wait until then. And uh, and we'll relaunch this thing, and hopefully, uh, you know, get it get even more response. So that's pretty much it for now. <laughs> I'm done. 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 <laughs> Thanks, everybody. By the way, for for listening and uh, and for helping promote it. I don't know if they can see that. Okay, good. I hope there's not such a big delay. I hope that this there's usually a big delay with you talking. Um, um, so in the description box, you'll find a link and go check that out. It is zoomtruth.com for the Flat Earth People Finder. And David, I'm going to contact you via email. I don't know if you'd want to or not, but if you'd like to do a full interview about yourself and how you got involved in Flat Earth, I'd love to do that with you. Wonderful. Thanks for being here. So Zoom Truth. All right. That kind of worked. Not very flawlessly, Mark, but it worked. I, apparently the chat room got something out of it. Yeah. So well, I, will have to, I will have to listen to the recap later. Well... All we need to do, you and I, is after we're done, is sign up ourselves to Zoom Truth Oh, I'm way ahead of you there. I you already signed. Ready? I signed up while he was talking. Oh well, I couldn't because I was kind of multitasking. Right. <laughs> but I'm going to do it too. So yeah, and I understand people's concerns about security, and you know, is there going to be a drone strike on my house by the government now that I've put myself on a, a website or they're collecting my data? The thing is, is that without that without any flat earth app without a meetup without a mixer without a conference without a convention the government already knows where you live right okay, yeah, I mean, people? In, in the <laughs> age of social media come on what, what do you think they're doing with six billion smartphones i mean yeah even if you don't even use a smartphone and you do buy things <laughs> online sorry they know where you are they know where right. you live they know where things are delivered and they know what kind of things that you look at online which is why when you go online things that are somewhat similar to what you've been looking at are suggested to you all of the time. when i i have personal knowledge because when i was in boulder with a lot of tech startup companies the second facebook became popular there were companies in our area that were data mining immediately and taking that you know hiring programmers as fast as they could and data mining and selling it to anyone they could which of course led to a whole lot of problems and it's like look those are the private companies what do you think the government's going to do i look at my trash uh and my my inbox for um mistier at gmail.com which is the way to email me uh through this channel about you know anything that you want to ask etc and the things that are there, and I don't even use that email tied to purchasing a product on Amazon or whatever, right. but somehow they've figured out that that's the me with my other personal email address. And I get so much trash uh, and junk mail. And I just fully just delete, delete, delete. I don't ever look at it. But um, I know that it's only there because once you're in the system, once you order something one time, it's game over, really. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, I I bought. I think I told you I bought some uh, pain medication pharmaceuticals through the internet for. Are you on it now? <laughs> what? Oh wow! Uh, no, the uh, no, I bought it for some survival gear. You know, part of the the whole first oh, yes. aid kit thing. And and I thought I'm not going to go through the hassle of like pretending to have a back injury and because anyone can do that. And I thought you know what can you get over the internet? And this was years ago. This was at least ten years ago. And once I was in there, I got solicitation emails forever. And finally, to where I, you know, I, I called, I called them up, or they called me. I go, look, take me off your list, right? And the East Indian girl leveled with me. She goes, yeah, you know, I can pull you off, and she goes, I will pull you off. She goes, but just so you know, in about a year, you're going to be put right back on. Those na the, those names never ever go away. She goes, and I go, when when is it when does it stop? She goes, when that email dies, or your phone number dies. Or you One die. of those two things. That's that's it. And or if I die, no, even if I die, as long as the email's still there, it's still going somewhere. I still get calls. I don't mean still. I get calls on my phone, even if I've put myself on that do not call list. So I still get calls, and the calls that I get on my cell phone, I don't know because I don't have that published anywhere. Are the robotic, you know, computerized voice? Hi, this is Karen. We can help you pay off your student loan. And I'm thinking, I'm 56. If I hadn't paid my student loan off by now, something's wrong. Plus, right. I don't have a student loan. I don't have any loans. Right. So, yeah, uh, the, yeah. Well, and I mean, come on, back in our day, student loan, I mean, you could pay for uh, tuition with couch cushion money. Not anymore. Not anymore. Student loans are no joke now. That is a horrible, horrible thing. And I feel for any millennials and younger that have People them. People used to say marriage was a ball and chain, but these days it's a student loan. It's student loans. <laughs> yeah. I remember. Well, we remember we used to joke. It's like, oh, how much Harvard cost back in the 80s? You know, six figures. It was like, oh, wow. Now it's a state college. That's six, six figures right down the street. Crazy. Sad. So um, other things to speak of. Uh, gosh, I... Had a whole list of things, didn't I? Oh, well, a while back, I think it was 2016 or so, you spoke with a prominent UFO expert, um, Stanton T. Friedman. Yes. He died May 13th at the age of 84. Right. And he died at Toronto's Pearson International Airport after he had a speaking engagement in Columbus, Ohio. He was famed, for those who don't know, for bringing Roswell into public consciousness. He was right. a nuclear physicist, and he'd actually officially retired from doing speaking engagements, but for some reason he decided to do one more, one more for good measure. And it seems, although I don't know exactly how he died, if you die in an airport between speaking engagements, I'm thinking massive coronary heart attack. That's all. Yeah, he wasn't exactly, I mean, come on, let, let, you've seen him. Well, he's 84, and he didn't exactly take care of himself. So 84, hey, I'm, I'm amazed he actually made it as far as he did. He has a uh, wife of 44 years who survives him and a daughter who works for CBS. Um, and the daughter is the one who's doing the speaking for him. And, of course, the family misses him, and so we send our condolences. Um, he wrote a bunch of books and co a bunch of papers, and he co-wrote books with a woman named Kathleen Madden, who is a UFO researcher as well. So if you have any old Stanton Friedman books kicking around from back before you found out about Flat Earth, I mean, we were all into, you know, uh, Face on Mars. I mean, I know that's uh, that's not Stanton, but we were, many of us anyway, were into looking at alternate views of space and society. And yeah. some of us haven't gotten rid of those books. So. Um, some of these names are well known. Graham Hancock, for example, but yeah, they uh, they did a big thing for uh, Stanton at one point. Um, he got inducted into the UFO Hall of Fame in Roswell, New Mexico. So you know, no, I mean, it's he missed in Canada and the U.S. because he lived in New Jersey and he had uh, joint citizenship with Canada as well. And uh, he has a whole day named after him. Uh, that celebrated in New Brunswick in the city of Fredericton, I think, or something like that. Hmm. Anyway, yeah. So uh, what do they say when people uh, when people die? Something military. Um, I know he's not military, but uh, I don't know. Well, like a 21-gun salute? <laughs> yeah. 
I'm trying to think of something UFO and flat earthish. Oh, oh, I don't well, know. Was, I can't think of anything. I look, he was considered one of the, the greatest UFO researchers of all time. Uh, he was on many television shows. He was considered like the authority to go to. And we and were he lucky was to on get the air with you on TFR. Let's tell that story. Yes, we we were lucky to get him. Uh, the first physicist, I think they tried to grab because technically he does have a degree in nuclear physics. Mm hmm. And he agreed to it, but I kind of had a feeling because back in 2016, there were a lot of people didn't know what it meant. That was, that was before the Kyrie Irving thing. And right. so, yeah, when we were talking, you know, this big showdown, you know, on, on TFR, the first 10 minutes, and I don't know if you remember it too well. I do very well. Where he's like, all of a sudden he stops me and he goes, wait, 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 you're, you're talking about flat earth. Like it's like, it's a real thing. Like it's literal. It's not metaphorical for something else. Which was now what was used in the media all the time, you know, like uh, flat Earth is the similar with climate denial or something like that. And I said, yeah, it's literal. And he get this you get this weird pause on the other end. It's like, well, how does that work? And then he had to start backpedaling really fast because, and he mentioned it several times during the show. It's like, look, I've had astronauts write the forwards to my books. Are you calling them liars? You know, it, it's like that. He was one of the first people to actually suggest that. that um, liars that or brainwashed? One of the two. Yeah, I was like, uh, I mean, I'm not saying I'm not saying they're horrible, evil people, but yeah, they are lying. But honestly, now my stance is, you know, they're lying for God and country. You know, you sign the waivers, and if you make it high enough, in the United States military, you have to do and say what they tell you. Period. Or you are brought up on treason, and that's not something that anyone should take lightly. Hmm. So, well, I, I don't know what happens after we die. It's one of those mysterious, puzzling questions most of us think of, and and some have a faith in place that allows us to know exactly what will happen. But since I don't have that particular viewpoint, one hundred percent, maybe Stanton now knows the Earth is flat. Maybe he's got an ability to see kicking himself <laughs> uh yes i would like to think that stanton's in a in a better place and hard to say with him uh but he he made i will say this he did move forward the conspiracy world yes 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 he might be saying something along the lines of i can't believe i wasted my whole life chasing down a fantasy a sci-fi fantasy with uh this whole ufo thing well but maybe not because we don't know all the territory if there is extra territory. Exactly. Terrestrial. Uh, I mean, that just means extra territory. Different. You know me. I mean, I, I believe that there are things flying around there. Do I think they're from Mars and Jupiter and Venus? No. But I do think there's things flying around. I've seen them myself. There's also lots of things on the internet that you can find in books as well uh, saying that you know if you feel different or you you don't fit into society you could be a pleiadian or star seed or this or this or that yeah yeah those seem to be just ways that people can identify with something if they themselves are going through tough times sure but a lot of globe earth believers say that about flat earthers did I ever send you the one of my favorite UFO things on video from Oak Bay, Canada? I don't where think so. The, there were two younger guys on a sailboat. They were in the middle of a, a bay, Oak Bay, and there were a lot of sailboats. Canadians hang out at the water a lot. And it was a perfectly calm evening. Dusk had already happened. And a brownish green craft just flew over everybody with no lights on whatsoever mm -hmm. and these guys were everyone was freaking out you know and and uh, and they filmed it i should send it to you but they were swearing up a storm that's why i don't send it to many people and I, why i don't really put it on the internet but it's out there and it's just brilliant uh it wasn't in hd oh if it was only a few years later we could have gotten it in hd but i'll send it to you if i get a chance it's uh it's remarkable people talk about roswell and other things it's the little ones that, that slip through the cracks very interesting well uh farewell stanton friedman we hardly knew you. Godspeed, space That's boy. It. That's what I was trying to come up with. I said, what is that salute? They say, Godspeed. You got yeah. it. I don't know. There you go. All right. Let's talk about somebody who unfortunately is still with us, Jeff Bezos. <laughs> Uh, uh, I guess that's mean to say because that that was Jeff Bezos. That story <sighs> was bound to happen. The thumbnail for this video is a screenshot of uh, Jeff Bezos in front of the Blue Origin Lunar Lander uh, 
concept, which is all it's ever going to be is a concept yeah. that he unveiled in Washington, D.C. the 9th of this month, 2019. So yep. I used that as a thumbnail and kind of, you know, altered it so it doesn't have Blue Origin on it. Now it has F-E-O-H-P and I photoshopped out Jeff Bezos. Yep. But um, yeah, Jeff says he's going to build this giant lunar lander that looks sort of like a blue water tower. And he says he's going to the moon and will help Blue Origin populate space. So yeah. more space programming. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, he had a follow-up story just this afternoon where he says that he envisions that we will have trillions of people. He didn't say millions or billions, trillions of people that will be colonizing space. And I'm like, what? And so, look, he, he, why should Elon get all the fun and all the funding that goes with it? So, and he is in direct competition with SpaceX and mm -hmm. SpaceX, as you know, when they did that whole Tesla nightmare in space, uh, got a lot of attention, even though you were quite apt to point out that there was no follow-up marketing. Which everyone missed, which even even I missed, which was amazing that 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 SpaceX didn't do any follow up marketing for that. There are no television commercials, yeah, no drive banners. Yeah, car that that can make it through space, or yeah. you know. What, why why it never happened? So Jeff Bezos running his own moon story, and if it sounds familiar, if you if you think guys think you're running into deja vu, this is exactly what happened in 2017. Kick when, the can, as you've said, down the what? Kick the can down the road. That's yeah, kick the can down the road. But in Elon's case, uh, his his timeline was way more aggressive. So he said at the beginning of 2017 that by the middle of 2018, last year, that they were going to send two tourists around the moon. They weren't going to land. They were just going to fly around the moon. Like, that's just something you can do. And now, here we are, 2019, and Jeff Bezos is saying, oh, yeah, we're going to, we, we think we got a good shot at colonizing the moon in, in the next five years. A much more reasonable timeline but come on five years in today's world no one's going to remember six months from now that headline yeah. they're saying so. in 2024 they're going to do this private lunar lander thing and uh, get the astronauts to and from the moon so yeah 2024 mark that on your calendars yeah. folks 2024 never gonna happen yeah even though and and I, I can't stress this enough even though no one has even claimed to no person from any organization from any country has even claimed to leave earth orbit since 1972 and yet uh, elon musk says oh yeah we're going to do it by 2018 no now there's nothing they don't even e spacex isn't even trying and we now should be, if the moon landing were real we should be literally the moon should, should be colonized already we should yes. have been to venus definitely it, it, mars every, Every futuristic, every futurist that has ever lived at one point said that we would have colonies on the moon by now. I, a moon base. Yeah. Um, that's, that's it, a moon base. So yeah. that it would be much easier to, to launch and people would be living there and working there and using that as a platform to go off world or off to other worlds. Yeah. But that's just, uh, that's just science fiction. Simple, simply put. Hard to give up, of course. I've got a lot of sci-fi movies, and I deeply enjoyed those. The philosophy behind them, you know, dreaming about what possibly could be. I was never a NASA nerd or a space nerd, but I did like a lot of those sorts of films, you know, because they were exciting. And right. they weren't car chase movies, that sort of excitement, or, or you know, westerns or shoot 'em up films. Those weren't really my thing, but I liked uh, end of the world movies and I like sci-fi movies and sometimes they became as one. So I still have them. I haven't gotten rid of them, but, um, I've gotten rid of the idea of space as we know it. And yeah, I feel, I feel so much better for it. Yeah. I'm always, I've always been a big believer in plot lines. And so I rely more on the story than the special effects and the world building aspect of movies. So as long, again, as long as the writing's good, I don't really care, you know, but that's, but yes. Why, in fact, I watched um, Star Trek 1 and 2 the other afternoon while I was m doing some video stuff in the background. And I still enjoyed them for the stories. Not necessarily, you know, you have to now have a whole new suspension of disbelief where it's like, okay, we're just going to, yeah, that space thing, we're just going to put it out, you know, out of our heads for a second and hopefully not relate it too much to modern day Earth. But yeah, I know what you mean. We watched National Lampoon Vacation, you and I, somewhere. Yes, we did in a hotel. in a hotel room. <laughs> that sounds which we probably edgy, shouldn't but... say like that. 
<laughs> Nothing like you people think. At your there mom. were bottles yeah, lying it. everywhere. We were barely <laughs> conscious. Yeah, well, that was just you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> me, hashtag me too. <laughs> you, you were ordering room service. Hashtag On your too. credit card. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, but yeah, what, 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 why National Lampoon's Vacation? I don't know. Watching old films. I mean, I know watching National Lampoon's Vacation is not the same thing as watching a space film because you don't have to suspend your, your disbelief when you're watching right. one of those things other than just the plot lines of most movies is kind of ridiculous when you sit down and, and really right. look at it. But watching old films that you've, you know, films you've already seen and seeing them again is nice. Even if just like you were doing today, even yeah. if, um, you've seen them before. I, yeah. I well, the nice. memories is I've, I've been telling people recently, uh, what will probably kill me eventually is nostalgia. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've got such a memory for that stuff. And, uh, cause it just, it doesn't just take me back to the film itself. It's everything that surrounded that time frame of the film. Most of the films, I can tell you where I saw it, who I was with, if I was with anyone. Uh, and you know what was going on in my life at the time. So I know what you mean by that in a different way, not as much by movies, but by fragrances, perfumes. Uh, There's perfumes that, that I've worn that have because the scent memory is so deeply linked, and that's just from being a baby and being born and bonding with your mother or whoever your caretaker was. And so perfumes I've worn through the ages can take me back. I can take a sniff of a poison. It's called Poison by Christian Dior, and it will. I take remember me poison. Right back to the 80s. Yeah. I still have it. I love the smell. Um, and then through time, there are different fragrances that I've worn. And I like that little trip down memory lane, lane using your senses. It, as you know, uh, um, scientists figured out some time ago that of the five senses, smell is the only thing that is hardwired to memory, to where, which is why fragrances and as you know, women have a what 30% more acute sense of smell. So it actually means more to them, which is also why women always accuse men of wearing too much aftershave because you know, but they don't, they're not for the man. They, they're not seeing and smelling the same thing. You're just smelling much, much stronger. But mm -hmm. yeah. Um, if the, if our memory is just electrochemical, well, fragrances are just electrochemical. Everything might be electric to be honest. Mm -hmm. the way it looks. Yeah. Um, I know that Elizabeth Taylor, the actress, uh, who's no longer with us, she was married to many men, but at one point she was married to a man whose brother put out smell o vision in the theater. Oh, in theaters. Yeah. Theaters. Yeah, they've always been trying to work in a couple more senses into media, and they're having a tough, tough time doing it. Now, Dream of course, glasses really that whole thing. Is yeah, I mean, the what they'd color. like to do. The ultimate goal, of course, is to hardwire straight in, you know, to where you can beam a signal and simulate just about everything, all the all the senses. But when you do that, you're really messing with. The human mind and at that point you could potentially alter memory so it's really really dicey dicey i mean it's well, a it's a great hear about us i wouldn't put it past them to be well even now in some it's not it's, it's not us you have to worry about it's the unfortunately for good or for bad it's the lawyers it's the insurance companies i don't so, worry about lawyers at all <laughs> well but companies do i mean for example the the self-driving cars which you and i have talked about right self-drive we have the technology to do self-driving cars right now not exactly like minority report but but close enough the problem is that once a self-driving car gets in an accident and somebody dies who pays mm. who pays the lawsuit at that point who you can't blame the driver they're sitting over there uh, you blame the car company, the software company, the technology company that it was it a third party product, whatever it is. They and because everyone's going to argue about how not to pay. That's so, as you know, the, the first person that was run over in Phoenix, they scrapped the whole program and now they're trying to figure out what to do. It's all fun and games until the money, until the wallets come out. Yeah, until somebody says, I'm suing. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Once once litigation gets involved, it just gets really, really messy. So even Minority though robot report. cars would drive better than us. Absolutely. Minority Report is a really good film. It is. And the scene, I think, where one of the characters goes into a clothing store, maybe The Gap, yeah. and these sort of talking billboards say something like, hello, Mr. Sergeant, did you enjoy the... 257 brand jeans that you purchased last exactly. week. We have them on sale today. Yeah. We have that happening now. As I'd mentioned earlier, when you have searched something online, that item or something similar on sale can pop right up, even if you've 
not looked at it for a well, while. Well, you've heard the stories, not to not to get into this conspiracy stuff too much, but as you know, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. Uh which is the about talking into your phone. If you if and I have I have run into multiple people that have said the same thing whereas if you talk about a particular topic and you say the word enough times near your phone, even though you're not using Siri, eventually when you go into your browser, the pop-up ad that's going to be in the corner is going to be tied directly to what you were saying because technically they can listen. There is yes. no federal law in the books to say that they can't data mine passively. Hmm. And they can probably look at you through your camera if they wanted to if on your phone or to. on your MacBook or your you know, whatever Microsoft computer you might have, yeah. computer you might have. So if you guys want to test it out yourself, think of just any routine, whatever it is, and just start saying that word or phrase around your phone with an earshot and then go browsing, maybe not even a couple hours later and see what happens. We probably say flat earth quite a lot, so. <laughs> well, and yeah, in our Here. case, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. <laughs> right. They flat earth so many times. These flat earth videos that I happen to be looking at already on YouTube. <laughs> Yeah, and arguments about flat Earth within earshot of a cell phone probably don't don't hurt us. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Well, also in 2024, not just Jeff Bezos doing his Blue Origin thing, NASA says they are going to land the first woman on the moon by 2024. Once again, mark your calendars. Uh, yeah, they're going to do that, they say. There's been an increase in the agency's budget by President Trump. How nice. <sighs> um, only 12 humans all men have walked on the moon I right mean, so we're gonna put a we're gonna put a woman on the moon now yeah. i think that this is an answer to us because we flat earthers specifically you and i on shows in the past have talked about the woman on the moon thing as well oh uh, that oh. of course raises uh Are they listening to us i know they've listened to globusters and jaronism and uh, rob skiba and change and other providers of good flat earth content on YouTube and changed little things. There's so many complications to that. Uh, one would be, of course, all right, put a woman on the moon. That's fine. You know me, I love women to death. Uh, but are you going to put a white woman on the moon? Are you going to do the whole Captain Marvel thing? Or are you going to go for a woman of color, a woman of some ethnicity that we it don't... It would be a mixed race woman who's Caucasian asian and black i swear that's what it's going to be. maybe i mean you could do an all-female team some sort of all-star thing from different space agencies but it's still not going to happen because you can't fake as you know you know i've you talked can't to go to the moon well no you can't <laughs> no you, you well yeah you can't go to the moon but you can't fake a moon mission anymore you can't do it they're scared to death you saw what happened with the whole israel thing yes if one but one still shot and then they auger the thing in from 15 feet and say, well, crash. Good night, everybody. Roll but credits. See, that wasn't just because it went bad. I mean, isn't that just because they planned to do it all the whole time that they pretend oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're but going to the moon? Mean, they knew a crash too, would be the end. They are too scared to put uh, a live transmission, even in a sound studio nowadays, because the internet hive mind is too good at figuring things out. And we well, can't penetrate truth's protective veil. There you go. I mean, it's, I mean, again, if one person, if a nerd at three o'clock in the morning in his underwear in the middle of Nebraska sees one thing out of frame and he screenshots it, it's over. Whatever no, it is. It's not over. And here's why short memories of people, people, plausible deniability, people want to believe. I mean, look at the Jay Tolan media, long distance uh, infrared footage. Right. We've proven the earth is not what they've told us okay at, right. at the very least and nothing has changed when it comes to science nothing absolutely nothing no that you, you are right that nothing has changed from from their standpoint but remember they have a vested interest that's monetarily driven of course but what is it going to take what will it take uh just the tipping point of the masses basically so more flat earthers more flat earthers well i mean get you you've heard my speeches i mean we'll win by attrition before it's over it, right. before it's over there will be so few scientists compared to the people on the street that just aren't buying the stories anymore that they will have nowhere to go their their credibility just keeps getting eroded away uh for in fact uh who was it told me um earlier in the year they said do you know how much how how much you're eroding away nasa nasa Mm -hmm. uh every day we're we're hammering at them every day we're running videos every single day saying oh yeah nasa is terrible nasa is rubbish nasa is completely invalid 
that takes its toll on them. They don't know what to do. Well, I have 1.6 billion reasons why I uh, hate politics and NASA. And that's the 1.6 million dollar, excuse me, 1.6 billion dollar increase uh, that uh, was given by by uh, Trump to NASA right. for their new budget. Right. And and yet Israel supposedly did their probe for 20 million, 30 million, not even 30 million, I think between 20 and 30 million dollars. Did they get the probe at discount probes are us? Maybe? Well, you know, they don't 1-800 discount probe. As far as I know, they're, they're not going to pay retail. Right. So <laughs> we need a rim shot for that. <laughs> Everybody, anybody? Tip your waitress. Two drink minimum. Uh, hey, we're telling jokes even Eric Dubay would approve of here on Flat Earth. Oh, come on. I mean, if, <laughs> seriously, you, you you sent a probe to the moon at 20 million. They, in fact, where did it even land? Did it land in the Sea of Tranquility? I'm just sorry. When I watched the thing, and it did not get a lot of simultaneous press, you know, it's not like CNN was breaking in. It's like, oh, Israel's going to land on the moon. First of all, the, the entire story would have been an embarrassment to the United States because, like, uh, you know, my reaction is like, really? Israel? Out of out of all the countries that supposedly well, could... Israel, a.k.a. America Jr., really? In some uh, I mean, what? I mean, I would have I would have been gunning for Canada or UK over over Israel. It's like, why, why? And then, you know, they uh it just was awful the computer animation was terrible i i mean i felt bad for like david weiss because i'm sure he was like watching this thing just go just like throwing stuff at the screen <laughs> why 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 with a munch silent scream face well yeah. a lot of men worry about shrinkage but the moon needs to really worry about shrinkage that was my segue did you, did you it's like good it? it's good you know that was a seinfeld episode <laughs> Oh, yeah. Literally dedicated to shrinkage. Yeah. A lot of women don't know actually about shrinkage. Well, then, I don't know from personal experience, contrary to some people's view. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I will explain um, it to people really quickly. Yeah. So uh, the male sex organs are extremely susceptible to temperature, both mm -hmm. heat and cold. I wonder what happens to astronauts on the moon. Something to think about. Oh, frozen grapes, probably, at that <laughs> probably. point. So anyway, so that's the entire Seinfeld episode was done on shrinkage because like when men, you know, run into the cold ocean for the first time, then they come out. If they're wearing some sort of form-fitting swimsuit, not flattering. A Speedo? Not flattering yeah. anyway. Yeah, so. it's, well, it's not flattering anyway. But, but Don't do it, kids. <laughs> but, but women don't understand. Some women don't understand. That was the whole point of that episode was like, you know, they're trying to explain. It's like, there's shrinkage. And women are like, I never heard of it. And it's like, oh, God. <laughs> so anyway. Well, they say, they being the powers that should not be, NASA, et cetera, scientists, that the moon has an interior that is cooling and it is shrinking. It's losing about 150 feet. That's 50 meters. It's got a little bit skinnier over the uh, last yeah, several happened. hundred million years. So right. the moon is on a self-imposed diet and uh, there's thrust faults. Now I like how they use the word thrust. And shrinkage. And shrinkage in the same fake space programming story, just like space X sounds like space sex. They always put this subliminal sexual innuendo in these stories. So, yeah. And again, it's just a space beat. That's all it is. They do not even care if you read most of the article and most won't. They, if all you do is glance at the article and it says, oh yeah, the moon is shrinking. Well, because you're on a globe. Right. That's all they care about. Moon quakes. Oh, wow. You're on a globe. Yep. There's a moon space, in the space sky. Space on Mars, hexagon on Saturn, reclassifying Pluto, every probe we've ever sent. We're going to recolonize this. Super Earths. Oh, we sent a convertible into space. I'm going to send my blue capsule to the moon. And apparently he's not sending. If he was smart, he would have said, Jeff Bezos, by the way, that he was going to send women to the moon. If he was smart, but he did not. He just said, we're going to send people. Well, there was a story in Newsweek magazine called Flat Earthers and the Rise of Science Denial in America that just came out the... Uh, that was a big evening. article. Big, big article. article. And uh, I will link it in the description box of this video. And he went to Denver. Yeah, went yeah. to Denver and you know what it us over. <laughs> well, Newsweek hates us. Um, they, they're, we've got enemies, no question. National Geographic, Discovery, Newsweek. Uh, I don't think Time Magazine necessarily hates us yet. 
CBS News hates us enough that they actually ran a story and then pulled it. One of the ones of you that I was most proud of. It's still on um, my channel, though. Oh, it's still on my channel too. It's not. I don't know. It's it's gonna have posterity. It's yeah. not gonna. It's not gonna leave forever. Uh, but Newsweek, remember they went after Jaron after yes. the documentary first came out, mm -hmm. and now they are going after us. Everyone. As, yeah, they're, now they're just picking on everybody and going yeah. after us. Well, why not? Because you can, the synonymous terms, so it's flat earthers, or they're trying to knit us in with climate denial and anti-vaxxers. Right. Basically, those are the big three now. And all of us who are involved in truth-seeking pretty much fit into those categories, although we wouldn't call ourselves... Uh, climate change deniers or anti-vaxxers in that way, because those are labels that make things seem negative, like science deniers. And in this Newsweek article, they even started it all off with, every day in the media, we see once unthinkable science headlines, more than 700 cases of measles across 22 states in the U.S., largely due to vaccine deniers. Climate change legislation stalled in the U.S. Senate due to partisan politicians who routinely confuse climate and weather. And one of the most incredible developments of my lifetime, says the writer in this Newsweek article, the Flat Earth Movement is on the rise. Yeah, hail Hydra. Um. <laughs> yeah, we are absolutely everywhere, and he knows it. And yeah. he's trying to bring it to light. And I, it, which is interesting because one, I believe in climate change. I don't, I, but from a flat Earth side of things. Yeah, I, if get, it's a, I get what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, I, I believe if, if I'm not denying climate change, I'm saying actually it's more plausible in the system that I adhere to. In an enclosed system, anything we do can have repercussions. Yeah. We pollute, we kill, we destroy. I mean, the, the now, term... If you were in a terrarium and you were doing things like that, there will be some effect eventually, but it's not what we've been told. No, no. Uh, but as you know, I mean, the term greenhouse gases has been around for a long, long time, decades. And well, what if it was literally a greenhouse? Doesn't that kind of make more sense? I mean, what they say global warming, global cooling. I mean, they're changing, you know, whenever, just like they kick the can down the road to when we're going to the moon. Same thing. Right. And and with the with the anti-vax thing, and you've heard me say it, but I've come up with a fairly simple response because I get asked that now pretty much every interview. Mm. Uh, you know, the, and they never run it. They never will run my story. That whatever soundbite I give them, they will never use it on air. And I go, look, the general public has to blame somebody or something. And if it's not food, water, or air, and those are all regional, you got to pick something. The, the public will not stand by and say, well, pff, have no, you know, throw their hands up, and say, I have no idea what it is. They, that is the most likely suspect. And until you come up with something better, they're not going to hear it. You know, they, that's what they're going to go after. I mean, real quick, the, if you remember the, um, uh, scientist girl that I was at from Texas tech, which I talked to yes, I briefly, I don't know if you remember listening to it, but, and she didn't take it out during the edit. You know, I let her edit, you know, things out that she didn't want to leave in. And she said that one of her cohorts was actually saying that, and I could not make this if I tried, the whole autism increase was because of social dating, meaning um, online dating. And it's like, I, and I'm like developing a facial tick, like watching her, I'm going, what, what, how, where are you getting this? And, and she said, because of social media dating, people are now meeting more people with very, very similar interests. And she's saying that the mixing of those people could be creating more autism. That's going, crazy. Did you? I go. I go. Video? Really? Because you and I both like chocolate ice cream yeah. and movies and long watch walks on the beach. We're going to produce an autistic child. Yeah. Did you see the video by Taboo Conspiracy? I'll try to remember to link it in this uh, in this chat box. The down box, as they call it. Um, it came out. I don't know a week ago or so, and it was talking about how. He's looked into the whole taboo against marrying your cousins. And indeed, it might be something that is a trick where the royals and the elites do often marry their cousins. And the amount of people that have the, the, the offspring that they have that do have mental or physical defects is just as small as if you and I got married and had children. So there huh. isn't really anything to that as much as we've been told it's a way that we've been told to don't marry your cousin but 
the powers that should not be. Some of them, some of them, they marry their cousins and they don't mm. have any issues with it. And it's a way that they found, the elites, to keep the family bond stronger, to keep the money stronger, to keep their interests stronger and tighter knit. While meanwhile, we're spreading ourselves all over the flat plain, huh. um, moving far away from our family and friends and a less tightly knit unit falls apart. And so there may be something to it. Really good video by Taboo Conspiracy. No. That reminds me of what you what you said that, that this woman that, that interviewed you said about her belief that it's it's yeah the, internet the dating causes autism. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, wow. not the yeah. I mean, not <laughs> not the not the same Texas Tech woman that that said you know that came up with the obvious statement that hey, YouTube seems to be fertile ground for conspiracies. It's like really, it's shocking. Um, uh, but her one of her friends was literally in the process of publishing a paper along those lines. And I'm going, whoa. I go, I don't think that is going to get any traction at all. And I was I, as, as honest as I could with Yeah, her. I mean, I know people who have children who are autistic and they never internet dated. Yeah, they yeah. I mean, it's, it's a stretch. The, the point is, it's like, look, again, I don't want to drag this out. But there's, again, all you have to do is go into YouTube or any Google and just type in two words, autism vaccinations. Yeah, that's then, it. And watch the, how many parents can you watch? I'm guessing you can't make it through 10 right. that, that say all the same thing. It's like, my kid was great. We went in for another battery of whatever it was. You know, remember, because you and I used to have what, six vaccinations. Now it's over 30. Right. And then they had high fever convulsions. And when they came out on the other side. If they did. They were never the same again. Yes. And sorry, I mean, again. You, you cannot hear that story many times without saying, hmm. There might be something off. And everybody, most of the people in the medical community know it's the MMR vaccine on top of it, which is measles, mumps, and uh, German measles, which is why there's this measles uptick because parents are whispering to each other. But they're saying, look, hold out as long as you can. It's not that they're saying don't do it. They're saying hold out as long as you can. So, you know, between this age range and this age range, you know, that's, there's this, eh, I don't want to get into it. It's It's so touchy right now and I feel bad for them, but I feel bad for the parents who may blame themselves and they shouldn't. No, they shouldn't. Because it's forced down their throats. I mean, my parents, your parents vaccinated with the small amount of vaccines. We small got. amount of vaccines. That's that's the difference. But what if one of those were bad? Uh, what if one of those caused ticks? It, it, the, the ratio here that here's the difference i'm sure there was exactly i, I am sure there was uh some sort of but it was so rare mm -hmm. the difference here is that we went from an autism rate for of uh, one in ten thousand to one in 40 which is an uh, amazing increase yes. an amazing Nobody i knew when i was in high school had autism that i <laughs> noticed but now i know people my own age who have children several Right. Are autistic. Yeah, More yeah. I mean, the, the, the ratio is really, really high. And and unfortunately, because if you want to blame capitalism, that's mm -hmm. fine. Uh, the lawyer, lawyer rules apply, which Great. is every loyal, every lawyer will tell you the same thing. Doesn't matter if it's if it's a drug that you put out that's screwed up or if you're if you're cheating in a cyclist race, they say deny, deny, deny until they absolutely have you. If they don't have anything on you, don't admit anything. Because the the class action litigation litigation the class action lawsuits would be tremendous to where the whatever pharmaceutical company I don't care how big it is they are going down. So you know I mean look at come on not again not to drag this out but look at the cigarette companies they knew full well for a long time and they denied and they denied and denied until finally all these studies came out especially the, the what really buried them was the secondhand smoke that's what killed them which was the, you know, the, the spouses of heavy smokers that didn't smoke a day in their life were dying of lung cancer. Yeah. Well, we know Bronca, who lives in Canada. You and I met her when we went to- Oh, my future ex-girlfriend, yeah. <laughs> and she's a flat earther. She's right. a Facebook friend as well. And she and her husband had a cat that died of inoculations. Um, and it's a thing with pets as well. Dogs and cats are being given shots regularly scheduled shots that have something different in them than when we were young and what we gave to our pets and my cats uh, my three who are right here sitting on my desk with me right now i've had them now for four years it's their fourth birthday they just passed and in may yesterday i think it was uh, my fourth year anniversary of actually having them living with me 
And um, I refused to do anything other than what the vet initially gave them before I got the cats, before the vet put them up for adoption. I ended up having to give my cats uh, the um, rabies vaccine when I moved to the UK. That was forced on me. But right. I didn't want to give them anything. And I don't. I get those postcards in the mail from the vet. You know, Rory's due for his blah, 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 blah. And I just throw it in the trash. They don't go outside. And I'm I was not about to say, if they don't, they're not, they're not children. So you well, can do anything. Well, cats are on a schedule with the vet to get inoculations. And um, I don't want or to what, do it. They won't be allowed to cat school? I get, probably not. They'll be shunned by their other cat peers. Oh, well, um, there's that. Yeah, true. Yeah. You need to fit in, in in the cat society. But a lot of cats and dogs have been diagnosed with cancer at an alarming rate. And people in the pet world are looking at these inoculations the yeah. same way as in the human world we're looking at the same thing yeah so it's uh, it's unfortunately it's doctors, not unless you get in a horrific accident where you need your legs sewed back on or you know something really really serious you're going to be you're going to be given things that you don't need in your body try natural first right. just a public service announcement from flat earth and other hot potatoes um, Bill Nye in the news with an amazing photo of Bill Nye with safety goggles on with a globe that's in flames and he's got a fire extinguisher that he's holding and it came out in the Vancouver Sun and in the Vancouver Sun, the headline is you idiots dot 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 the planet's on effing fire quote unquote. Right. That's Bill Nye's message to leaders stalling on climate change. Climate change, yeah. Uh, I love that globe on fire, though. That was so perfect. You probably heard me say this on, on Strange World recently, which was, look, when it comes to climate change, there isn't it. Look, if you watch enough science fiction movies over the years, you know full well how this is going to play out, which is because the climate change is slow. You know, so that's, it's that frog in the water type thing. Uh, making changes on a corporate level multinationally is such a hard thing to even ask of people because you're talking about in some cases potentially crippling their economies that what is their what is their motivation to do it they, you can say well you know it could be like geostorm or geo apocalypse where there'll be tornadoes ripping through every state and every country and, and the argument will be from the other side from corporate america or the political leaders that are on top of that they'll say I haven't seen it. Oh yeah, sure, a few storms here and there. You know how what the the the, the argument will always be the same. So, uh, Bill Nye coming on with his little stunt got it, I I, I saw that story come through. It's not going to get any traction. They, whatsoever. What they were trying to do is use somebody that's part of many of our childhoods, Bill Nye, the science guy, and right. now have him older swearing at us. Uh, and yeah. that would seem maybe to go to our core and affect us very deeply. This man we learned science from is now trying to reach virtually through the newspaper or the TV screen and grab us by our shoulders and wake us up to, to the whole climate thing. So. If he would have said that and then a rogue cyclone took out part of the East Coast within 24 hours, it would have some impact. Little suspicious, though. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, it's 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 fun uh, to make that sort of statement. It's very sensational, but it's not going to go anywhere unless you have something to back it up with. You know what I mean? I mean, saying that it's like, hey, oh, the planet, we're in danger. It's like, how many we we've heard the sky is falling argument. You know me. You know I I love a good disaster doomsday type thing, but if you're gonna come on and throw that out there, you better have something. You better have something to follow it up with. You know, there have been things that looked suspicious. Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans, many events, tsunamis, oh, other sure. hurricanes that but looked as if a storm had been steered. Uh, of course, of course, not named after anyone in particular. No, no, no the, one. Um, <laughs> seriously, <laughs> why did you pick that name? I don't know. I didn't. The, uh, but <laughs> I mean, great, some, great extra snow, <laughs> some extra snowfall here, some rainstorms here. Uh, plus, you know, the, all the conspiracy groups firmly believe, including me, that, that the United States at the very least has the ability to bend weather, you know, to, to not, not necessarily make it everything they want, because I think it's a really delicate system. Like so, the character Storm? Oh, an X-Men? Yeah. Like yeah. That. 
We have yeah, that. she could she could manipulate weather absolutely. <laughs> But that was way before the whole global warming thing or climate change or whatever. So anyway, yeah, Bill Nye, yeah, forget about him. He's, he's, I mean, remember, he's still in the middle of, which is weird, he's still in the middle of suing Disney for back pay. Remember, because he uh, supposedly, I think he was suing him for $17 million. Wow. Said, that he owed, they owed him for residual syndication. I was like, all right, what do you, are you going to get a settlement out of that? What's happening there? Did you see a video on, uh, well, it's on many channels, but Robbie Davidson of the Celebrate Truth channel mirrored it on his, the Nelk boys, N-E-L-K. I did watch it. Pilots talking about flat earth. A little yeah, skinny. drunk drunk pilots at the <laughs> airport bar getting on a plane, young guys. I had right. never heard the Canadian, I mean, Canadian, can, Canada, Canada produces some outstanding comedy teams, troops, uh, Kids in the Hall, uh, Broken Lizard, uh, trailer Park Boys, you know, just to name a few. Uh, but this particular group I had not heard of, but they're pretty funny. Yeah. You know, it's a, It was very professionally done, and, you know, they was done for shock value, which was they were mixing, okay, I'm a drunk, reckless pilot. Right. That, that could have been an extra out of Top Gun that uh, is also a flat earther. and At you know, a yeah. bar, restaurant, in an actual airport, mixing and mingling with regular people with the whole pilot you know, uniform on pretending to drink from a flask, which was probably filled with nothing other than right. water going iced tea, yeah, you know, yeah. uh, and saying, I got to fly in an hour and talking about flat earth. So yeah. very, very interesting. A little bit catch me uh, if you can and a little bit top gun. So, yeah, it was it was good enough. And again, I'll take the I'll take the story. Sure. Yeah. It's you know, YouTube has now gotten so thick with flat earth stories it's it's tough to break into it so everybody's trying well there's a new flat earther on the scene and her name is probably alexandra probably alexandra i don't Wait, mean are you not are you not sure are you not sure it's alexandra <laughs> no it's a channel name probably alexandra I'll so you're not wait the, the channel name alexandra probably oh okay yeah. So <laughs> link in the description box uh, it will be anyway, not while the show is live. Long there. blonde hair, interesting makeup. Yes. And uh, very, very contrasty. And very intelligent, very well spoken, very interesting ideas and interesting ways of expressing herself. Where did she come from exactly? Because I was I was a little surprised she didn't have that many subs. No, but she, you know, Bob from Globusters mirrored her video and many other people as well mirrored it and shared it. And she did a video called, Are You Believing a Lie? And also before that, she did a video on Trump and 5G and um, lots of other things. So, so she's the new Flat Earth conspiracy or new conspiracy girl right now. I like her. I like oh, her. She seems I'm fine. going to contact her and see if she'd be willing to do an interview. So. She should do an interview on your show. I, I think she would. It. I think you two would, would be a good back and forth. Yeah, I think so. So I'm going to contact her. And like I said earlier, um, I'm going to get um, David of Zoom Truth on to do an interview about how he got into Flat Earth. And I still want to talk with Jonathan Shalimar about the Mount Shasta conference that's coming up in September. He and I tried to do an interview, but due to Google issues, I was unable to hear him. So hopefully I'll be able to figure that out. Right now, it's only a third party getting on that we can't hear. So one-on-one -on -one interviews or talks like we're having seem to be fine. So anyway, subscribe to the channel, probably Alexandra, and check out her video, Are You Believing a Lie? It came out three weeks ago. And due to support from flat, fellow Flat Earthers, her normal videos, which get about, I don't know, a thousand videos at the best, that one got, ready folks, 11,000 views. So Yay! Thanks, flat Earthers. That's great. And then her other videos are getting more views because people are like, oh, I like her. Let me watch what else she's got going. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, probably Alexandra. Check that channel out and I will hope that I'm able to contact her and she will agree to do an interview. Hopefully she will nail down that channel name as soon as possible. I'm yeah. Hoping. But yeah. right now it's in the probably stage. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you did something with Trinity Broadcasting Network. They came to Washington. Tell us how that went. Yeah, Last they time did. we did a show was like a month ago or so. Yeah, just before we left for the New Zealand conference down in Auckland. Uh, and I didn't know how serious they were. Uh, Trinity Broadcasting Network reached out to me and said that they wanted to um, uh, they wanted to talk to me. And they really didn't give me any context. 
They just said, hey, we're, we're thinking of coming up. I'm like, okay, sure, why not? And and they didn't even hesitate. You know, that's a big big outfit. And I don't have the name in front of me of the guy that, um, you know what? I could grab it real quick if you want. Yeah, sure. Hang on. They are an international Christian-based broadcasting television network, and they are the world's largest religious television network. So being contacted by Trinity Broadcasting Network, otherwise known as TBN, is a big thing. So they do original programming and faith-based films and uh, that sort of thing. So I think it's cool that they contacted, of all people, Mark Sargent. And that's how you do it. People wonder, how did Mark Sargent talk to like a military gunner? How did Mark Sargent talk to somebody in the military? How did Mark Sargent get an interview with blah, 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 blah? Unsolicited. Is it because my agency sets them all up in advance? No, <laughs> That's what it people is not. Think. The reality is people just contact you. Well, it, look, I, I, I'm not shy about saying oh, this. And your hair I looks was, good, by I, the way. I your may hair not have been good. the what? Sorry, interrupting to tell you your hair looks good. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, I was told uh, down in New Zealand that I should uh, get a little more polished for camera work. It looks great. It's just fine. Thank you. Uh, from coming from you, I absolutely take that as a compliment. Uh, okay, so th no, was I the first person to do flat Earth? Absolutely not. Was I the first person to put my real name and phone number and email address and all my contact information on the internet so I could be abused on a daily basis and beg for cookies? Yes, and beg for cookies <laughs> during one of the clues, which I only put in text, and I can imagine still somewhere in Boulder, Colorado, at six seventy five Rockswood Lane, that somebody is getting cookies in the mail and wondering why. Hopefully, but, but no one ever contacted me afterwards. You'd think somebody would write me and say, hey, I'm getting cookies, but I, I think it's probably fine. The um, So because of that, because I put my name and my phone number out there, though, people contact me on a regular basis uh, because it's easy. Media is lazy. They are. It's plain and simple. It's like they don't want to spend time hunting somebody down. I'm, I'm looking at all the people in the chat room that, uh, that wonder. It's like, why don't I get interviewed? That's why. So... These guys, in fact, it's John, oh my God, John Bradshaw. He's one of them. Uh, in fact, here, I'll show you the email. Mm. Or it's, it's, he actually sent me a, a thank you. It's from It Is Written. That's the name of the particular uh, production house at TBN in this case. And they sent a full team out here and we sat and, you know, you know took them, you know, came in, hooked up all the lights you know, had on air personality. Did you know? your mom cook for them? And did she make uh, iced applesauce? No, she was not. She was not here. Oh. Uh, but it was it was really well. Uh, it was a great interview. We talked about nothing but biblical things for a solid hour. And they were toying with the idea of turning it into a show. Interesting. And, I mean, from a production house standpoint, why not? I, you know, if enough people are saying, look, the, from a biblical side of things, the, the word of God is flat. Why wouldn't they look into this? It's a show that writes itself. It does. And, and I gave him the nickel tour and hit him with everything I got. I, I think I would have made Rob Skiba mostly proud, although I did drop his name and Zen Garcia and Robbie Davidson and as many others as I could. I said, look, it's nice that you're talking to me. Uh, but there are but but they wanted they wanted a good, as you know, a surface level as you know, the whole tour guide. Thing. Rand like, Campbell, okay, Vincent Rhodes. I mean, there's so many. Yeah, and but I will. I can still point people in the right direction, no matter what what angle you're looking at flat Earth. And so, yeah, Trinity, we we shot it, and they're going to use the segment. I don't know exactly when uh, this particular thank you letter was sent uh, back on the sixth. So, well, hopefully, hopefully something good comes out of it. I'm still waiting for things like uh, again, uh, waiting for TBN to release their story. So, if you see stories coming out, you don't think they just happened. Uh, uh, Guy Williams waiting for that one. David Ferrier still waiting for that one. Uh, another some New Zealand thing, and then uh, oh, I'm sorry. And then I'm doing uh, TV Ten in Australia as soon as I get back from Calgary. Exciting, yeah. exciting times. So yeah. you're going to be back from Calgary on a Monday, and then back in the driver's seat Tuesday on Strange World without mich missing a beat, right? Exactly. Uh, pr provided they let me back we'll in the back here. Back in the country, yeah, we hit Strange World, then then the interviews, and then, uh, you know, your thing. Wonderful. <laughs> so, okay, so there was a really cool guy named Josh Crane who contacted me, contacted D I T R H David Weiss, 
contacted Gary John Heather or Gary Heather or Gary John. He uses those names interchangeably and Dave Marsh. And he did an interactive flat earth documentary where he asked us all questions and then put it together in such a way that anybody can watch this and then click on, let's say, David Weiss and find out what he has to say about specific questions. They could avoid me entirely, or they could just listen to what uh, Gary John Heather has to say, or me, or watch all of it. So it's an interactive, it's like choose your own interview subject. Anyway, I'll put a link to that. And I just wanna thank Josh Crane for taking the time out from you know what he's been doing to put together something on Flat Earth. It's very well done, doesn't mock us at all. It's fully informational about Flat Earth. He let Flat Earthers do the talking without putting any quote unquote spin on it. So that's Josh Crane and the interactive flat earth documentary link in the description box below. Hmm. So, um, All right then. what else, what else is happening? You did an interview recently with, uh, another Christian group. And I heard you say on strange world last night that some questions came your way about biblical flat earth that you'd never heard before. So I'm curious, can you remember what they were? The ones oh, that were really wow. like mind blowing. Yeah, if you guys wanna to listen to an interesting biblical discussion, it was with a podcast called After Church, uh, which is an interesting uh, group of guys. And it was a video interview. I only did recorded the audio uh, on my side and they'll, uh, I think it's up on their channel already though, because it was they did it live, a live stream. And they were asking a lot of theological questions that I, little angles in the Bible I'd never heard before. Um, many going along the lines of uh, the role of Christ in flat earth, the different civilizations. But and this is stuff I had thought about before, but I'd never had to articulate it, which is, you know, how does the Bible apply to, to, a, to an enclosed system? And people that live in it, and what you know, what what are the the greater ramifications? And you know, like even his wife chimed in, you know, where where does the kingdom of heaven reside? You know, and of course I, I you know, so I had to speculate as best I could. It's like, all right, well, if I had to do it, here's what I would do. So you'll have to listen to it for yourself because it was two hours of that stuff. I mean, we we went we went long, and it was very very interesting. But yeah, coincidence, uh, multiple Christian groups hitting me. Uh, in the same thing. It's like, look, I, again, I appreciate that, that hardcore Christian groups will want to talk to me. Uh, but there are better, you know, I refer as fast as I can, if I can, but if, if the people, if whoever I'm referring to don't get back to them quickly, they come right back to me. It's like, look, we're on a timetable here. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, well, as we all know, you do the most flat earth interviews only because at the start people were contacting you looking for Matt Boylan yeah. and Matt didn't, want to do interviews and they said well okay we've tried to contact him but he won't respond how about you and you said okay sure and then it, the train kept on rolling because when one media outlet heard you then another media outlet said get that guy he does interviews and then the rest is and the, yeah the rest yeah to where now all they have to do is type in and i did that part of that strategically where i said all you have to do is type in flat earth interview and a little hint dropping hint to people out there and i pop up and they listen, they seriously, I've heard guys, they say, oh yeah, we listened for like 10 minutes. And then we said, okay, just call them, <laughs> which I, I hate to say it because it, it, I don't want to compare myself to him that much, but that's how Bill Nye got on as many things very as Very short, very sweet, very um, d do things quickly and regularly. Right. And, and can you squeeze in the information and the time we have allotted? Mm -hmm. So like when I was doing the radio stations down in New Zealand, you know, it's like, okay, how long do we got? We got eight, you got eight minutes. It's like, okay, here we go. And, you know, you got to talk as fast as you can. And hopefully, you know, you can talk, you, you keep them from interrupting because they, if they sense any dead air, they'll, they'll chime in and steal some of your, some of your time. So I've just gotten better at it over the years. I mean, I, I lost count after 250. So I don't know what I'm at right now. A lot. Cool. Yeah. I love the fact that you're so dedicated to flat earth. <laughs> I need you, Mark Sargent. Oh, that's awesome. Anywhere. That's it's so nice to hear now that now that I'm on tour. Yeah, really. And you flat realize earth, how what a flat earth is on tour. Flat earth itself flat earth is on tour, tour in 2019. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've already done Los Angeles and New Zealand, and there's still just just in the ones I'm looking at, still six more. 
Calgary. We've got to do. England. Calgary. I'm doing the Gather That's Conference amazing. in Stockholm. I'm doing UK with uh, Roxanne and crew. Mount Shasta. Mm -hmm. Amst well, if I eventually get invited to Amsterdam, whoever's going to invite me. Uh, and then finally, Dallas, Texas. Yeah. And that's assuming nothing else comes between now and then. I mean, and somewhere in there, I'm going to have to squeeze in whatever. There's some UK group that wants to do a documentary. They're coming over for Exciting. it. Exciting. Uh, who would have thought? There's another documentary in the works uh, with some of the people that you and I met when we were at the Question Everything conference in Los Angeles. They're putting together a documentary. Oh, right. Wander is doing something. Right. I, I don't know. I know very little about it, but I'm going to try to find out more and get somebody from that on the channel to talk about what that documentary is is going to feature because um, uh, Shelly um, is going to be part of that as well. Shelly Lewis? Shelly Lewis. Got it. Because, you know, we met Shelly when we were in um right from flat earth radio, flat earth radio. Flat earth radio. Was at the la thing very nice the person beautiful shelly lewis beautiful shelly lewis yes um well she's i mean on air talent you have to be like that well I yeah mean, but i mean she doesn't God. have to There's, be that beautiful <laughs> well come on well that's true i mean she lucked out but i mean there's yeah. a reason everyone knows why the hostess at the restaurants are always pretty and she's smart and she's dedicated to all sorts of truth seeking. So I can't speak gonna, to that. I heard she was as dumb as a post. No, but, <laughs> but I'm going to contact Shelly Lewis and Mark Hollander and see if maybe they'll both be on or if they're going to suggest other people that would be better to talk about the documentary that they are putting together. So with the Flat Earth Radio folks. Ah. So, yeah, more more things happening. Um, oh, I want to talk about meetup that is happening in Chicago. Now, we know Melov Cocktail and uh, his service dog, a beautiful German sh shepherd named Shanti. And we met him for the very first time in person, although I've spoke with him on the phone before. And, you know, we see him in chats and on Facebook at uh, the very first Flat Earth Conference in Raleigh, North Carolina, if you can remember the German Shepherd and Malav. I do remember. Yes. And he's putting together something in West Suburban Chicago, a Flat Earth meetup. He's holding it there every um, other Tuesday from 6 to 8 p.m. This began May 7th. So it's May 7th and then skip a week and then the next and then the next. So every Tuesday. And it's at the Whole Foods uh area and then he's going to look for other locations so uh, you've got to be over 21 years of age children under 13 months be chaperoned by a mother or father and if you want to find out more about these meetups in west suburban chicago flat earth meetups every other tuesday in west suburban chicago uh, email my love and here is his email address it's kind of long i'll put it in the description box it's m-a-l-a-v B H A V S A R at yahoo.com. That's M A L A V B H A V S A R at yahoo.com. So check it out. Flat Earth Community Awareness Meetups. They are absolutely free. And um, yeah, you can, you can, uh, if, as long as you're over 21, you can bring children as long as your children are, you know, under your control at all times. So. But, and you remember, uh, we flat Earth. We like we the, children the children. Right now. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Absolutely, we are. I am going. I have a personal mission in the next couple of years. We are going straight for the kids. I mean, that sounds bad on the surface for people who don't understand what that's all about. But the reality, recruiting. I mean, recruiting kids as flat Earthers. Quote me on it. Book it. Yeah. You want to start some controversy so that I somebody not... comes and interviews you and says, what are you doing to our children? And then you can talk about flat earth. And then I will say my line, which I'm dying to say, which is you don't have to worry about that anymore because flat earth already has the children. And then you do this. <laughs> <laughs> you want, do you want one of my cats to pet while you're saying it? <laughs> Going, <laughs> Mr. Bigglesworth. Exactly. Pretty standard, really. Uh, no, I'm going to, uh, I will not be happy until I get dragged in front of a Senate subcommittee and have to answer questions where I actually have to laugh at politicians. And and then it'll turn just, I, my ultimate goal is that it'll turn into the Napster debacle all over again. See, the thing is, is mainstream media and the powers that should not be have the children now. They have their body, 
mind, and soul. Right. And they're destroying the children and which, the bonds of family. Which and I, I have to br- want to bring things back to where they they should be. We really are putting together a new world order, but not the one we've been told about that's bad. A good one, like you've said before on Strange World. Oh, you heard me say that. Of course, I listened. Where, to where you. someone where someone asked that, and I yeah. and I, I I was trying to be as delicate as I could, but. It would be one of the default traits. It's not like a Bush New World Order. No, I mean technically it is a new world. And you kind of throw. And we will but, have and better it, order of where exactly it is kind of a reordering as well. No so. brainwashing of children. Uh, no. Vaccine poisons in the water and in the air. No, no, no. And chemtrail. No, you know lies about the place where we live. Billions of dollars with that Trump gives to NASA. That's not happening anymore. Those billions of dollars can go to feed and house people. Um, is it the possible? new world we want is fantastic if we can get there and building more flat earthers is the way forward. Is it possible to create a good new world order? Maybe. We'll have to see about that. Uh, yes, we will. <laughs> yes, we will. And by the way, I, I've got to throw in you know the, the whole audacity that we're targeting kids. Well, like you said, everybody is, is targeting kids to a certain degree to where the when when logan paul was talking to summer and you know and he he was like saying aren't you a little too young to be a flat earther and i'm going i'm i'm staring at the screen going your target audience is eighth graders wow where are you even you don't have a a a moral leg to stand on you're gonna when he you know there's there's a knee-jerk reaction when that kid is saying oh yeah you know flat earth is, is you know shouldn't be for people that are so young it's like yeah yeah, whatever. I think it's a great way to start children off on the right foot is to teach them about flat earth. If you're a parent, if it's something that you and your spouse or mate agree upon, or if you're a solo parent, if something you feels right, I say do it. Oh, yeah. Well, flat earth is a gateway drug. You know that. Is flat earth a gateway drug into all the other things or are all the other things a gateway to flat earth? Oh, Works both we're, ways. Now we're getting into deep. Once you're on the truth train, I mean, that's you're, a sound. On, you're we, along we just, for the ride. We, we just created a whole bunch of sound bites just then. <laughs> Once you're on the truth train. <laughs> Woo-hoo. Oh, man. Somebody uh, use that. Yeah. Somebody turn that into like a, like a, uh, mix sound oh boy what's the um what's Meme? the sound no no what's the sound thing that they use sound to alter? Bite? i don't know no they alter voices to make their sound voices sound better uh oh, i don't know ah uh, so help me out uh chat auto auto tune auto tune that's it I, oh my yeah. god thank you <laughs> somebody somebody t somebody t pain our our uh, sound bikes yeah exactly um, I want to say hello to Chris Van Maitri. Oh, Chris Van Maitri says that Shelly Lewis, who we were just speaking of, the beautiful Shelly Lewis, and Joshua Michael will be in Denver this week for uh, FTL. They'll be documenting the Force the Level, and that will probably be part of the documentary yeah. they're, uh, Karen, they're putting it on. Karen's going to be there, too. Putting on. Karen is going to be there, too. There. Um, hello to Walter Williams and Ridgeview and Fishing for Truth. Hello. And Cleary is here as well. Also, Nick Terziski. And Bill Keith. Hi, Bill Keith. The Bill Keith channel uh, in the house. Anthony Servalis, Rich Flat. Hello to Chris Topher going through the live chat here. Yep. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. Adrian Marcus as well. Robbie D of Celebrate Truth, who we've been speaking of off and on throughout this. Hey, my love cocktail truther is here. And he says, if you were in Chicago, let Shanti and I know. So if you're in Chicago, you can go to these every other Tuesday meetups. So that's interesting. And like I said, I'll put in the description box a way to get a hold of Malav. Uh, Laura Nelson and Doc Michael are here in the live chat too. Scrolling up. Um, sorry, it's hard to do this on my phone. We have um, Black Cat Productions and... I'm all for anything with the name cat. Hello, Paula, Bible literalist, and all people, free people, and J.N. Crane. And everyone, thanks for being here. I don't know if there's much else we've got on the table at this point. I think we might have. Oh, uh, we covered a lot of stuff. We did. So. And it was all flat earth related with only a little bit of non flat earth related stuff. And shrinkage. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's part of every show, isn't it? 
<laughs> when when you're a globe believer and you listen to a flat earth uh, uh, video, you always have shrinkage. Wow, you made that work. <laughs> I didn't think you could pull it off, but you did. Yes. Uh, so next week, uh, everything should be fine because I'm only going to be in Canada for four four nights. Mm -hmm. And then when when I get back, everything should be back to normal, I think. As normal and you should, as you should try to hunt down um, that funny girl's channel. Um, she Alexandra, can't... possibly Alexandra. Possibly Alexandra, yeah. maybe Alexandra. Maybe Alexandra, could be Alexandra. Could be Alexandra. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, whatever. What Alexandra, I, I think. I don't know. If you can get her to choose a channel name, you should you should try to track her down right. uh, and see where she is. Is she with us? Because if she isn't, she's against us. She's with us, all right. Oh, good. Yeah. So that and Zoom Truth is going to be a, another future interview, and uh, I'll also we'll get uh, the man uh, Jonathan Chalamar, who's putting together the conference in beautiful Mount Shasta to talk about talk about things there. Have you ever, by the way, not not to end on a weird note, uh, but you ever tried reaching out to Owen? Oh yeah, I tried, but oh, you did you? Yeah, yeah. Owen is in Owen world. Yeah. He's talked to David Weiss, and once you reach the level of David Weiss, I mean, where else are you going to go? Oh, well, exactly. I mean, David now is on a whole right other, down the whole other <laughs> tier. It's tough to gaze upon David directly now. I don't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks to everyone for being here. I appreciate it. And uh, you and I will be back next Wednesday at this very same time on this very same channel. Brilliant. And some new interviews are coming your way soon. I'm, I'm as soon as I hang up with you, I've got one apparently from a university back east. Lovely. All right, yeah. everyone. See you later. Keep it Hail going. Hydra, George Clooney, uh, Go Power Coin. I don't know. Canadian. Truth Train. Truth Train. Everybody on the Truth Train. Woo!